Well, a very warm welcome to you to morning prayer on Thursday, the 30th of September, when we remember Jerome, translator of the scriptures and teacher of the faith from the 5th century, uh, 420. Um, and we, um, we're also praying for bishops um, today, for all people um, called to be bishops within the Church of England, and especially, of course, the person um, we believe is called even now um, to serve as the next Bishop of Bath and Wells. So let's bring before God um, our lives, our world, the church and the day ahead of us as we come to our prayer. O oh Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us. Your way may be known upon earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. O let the nations rejoice and be glad, for you will judge the peoples righteously and govern the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Then shall the earth bring forth her increase and God, our own God, will bless us. God will bless us and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. Night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. Psalm 78, beginning at the first verse. Hear my teaching, O my people, incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will pour forth mysteries from of old such as we have heard and known, which our forebears have told us. We will not hide from their children, but will recount to generations to come the praises of the Lord and his power and the wonderful works he has done. He laid a solemn charge on Jacob and made it a law in Israel, which he commanded them to teach their children, that the generations to come might know and the children yet unborn, that they in turn might tell it to their children so that they might put their trust in God and not forget the deeds of God, but keep his commandments and not be like their forebears, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation whose heart was not steadfast and whose spirit was not faithful to God. The people of Ephraim, armed with the bow, turned back in the day of battle. They did not keep the covenant of God and refused to walk in his law. They forgot what he had done and the wonders he had shown them. For he did marvellous things in the sight of their forebears, in the land of Egypt, in the field of Zoan. He divided the sea and let them pass through. He made the waters stand still in a heap. He led them with a cloud by day and all the night through with a blaze of fire. He split the hard rocks in the wilderness and gave them drink as from the great deep. He brought streams out of the rock and made water gush out like rivers. Yet, for all this, they sinned more against him and defied the Most High in the wilderness. They tested God in their hearts and demanded food for their craving. They spoke against God and said, can God prepare a table in the wilderness? He struck the rock indeed so that the waters gushed out and the streams overflowed. But can he give bread or provide meat for his people? When the Lord heard this, he was full of wrath. A fire was kindled against Jacob and his anger went out against Israel. They had no faith in God and put no trust in his saving help. So he commanded the clouds above and opened the doors of heaven. He rained down upon them manna to eat and gave them grain of heaven. So mortals ate the bread of angels. He sent them food in plenty. He caused the east wind to blow in the heavens and led out the south wind by his might. He rained flesh upon them as thick as dust and winged fowl like the sand of the sea. He let it fall in the midst of their camp and round about their tents. So they ate and were well filled, for he gave them what they desired. 
but they did not stop their craving. Their food was still in their mouths. And the anger of God rose against them and slew their strongest men and felled the flower of Israel. But for all this they sinned yet more and put no faith in his wonderful works. So he brought their days to an end like a breath and their years in sudden terror. Whenever he slew them, they would seek him. They would repent and earnestly search for God. They remembered that God was their rock and the most high God their redeemer. Yet they did but flatter him with their mouth and dissembled with their tongue. Their heart was not steadfast towards him, neither were they faithful to his covenant. But he was so merciful that he forgave their misdeeds and did not destroy them. Many a time he turned back his wrath and did not suffer his whole displeasure to be roused. For he remembered that they were but flesh, a wind that passes by and does not return. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. Turning to the New Testament, so Mark chapter 14, verses 43 to 52. Immediately while Jesus was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, and with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day, I was with you in the temple teaching and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. It's a curious little detail, that certain young man who turns up wearing a linen cloth, which then seems to fall off and he just runs away naked. Not quite sure where that fits in, but anyway, it's there. Let's turn to our prayers of intercession, shall we, as we pray for the world, the day before us, and the church. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for the psalmist recording many of your mighty acts in the Old Testament. Thank you for this account in Mark's Gospel of Jesus about to be betrayed by Judas. And of this strange man who appears and then runs off naked. Lord, we remember the ways in which we betray you. Remember our own sin. We come before you now to acknowledge that sin and to ask for your forgiveness. Maybe for those things that we know we've done we're conscious of, those things perhaps that we're not so aware of, the sins perhaps that we're prone to simply through our own humanity and mortality. So Lord, we thank you for that and ask that your Holy Spirit will enable us to follow your ways more faithfully. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the world, asking once again for your forgiveness for all humanity, for the ways in which we fail to steward your creation as we should. Lord, we remember the commandment that you have given us to look after all that you have made. Lord, we recognise the ways in which we collectively have abused your creation and continue to do so. Help us all to amend our ways and commit anew to following you. 
Lord, as we look to our harvest time and next week in our morning prayer sessions to focusing more upon creation and related issues. So we ask that your Holy Spirit will move through us and enable us to follow your, you faithfully. Uh, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, as we pray for the church, so today we pray for bishops, for all who are called to serve as bishops. We recognise the challenging nature of that ministry. Often bishop, bishops having to, well, having to face difficult situations, exercising leadership in a very particular way. Lord, we thank you for our bishop, Bishop Ruth, and her ministry. We pray for the process to identify a successor to Bishop Peter as Bishop of Bath and Wells. Lord, we believe even now that you will have identified somebody who will take, along, take on that role. So we pray that you would work in his or her heart. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Today, Lord, we pray for our schools at Staple Grove and Norton Fitzwarren Primary Schools, thanking you for the links that we have with them. Lord, especially today, we thank you for the visit of Staple Grove School this morning to, to St John's to celebrate harvest, to come and bring their harvest gifts and to celebrate harvest. And then in the afternoon, a equivalent service in the school with Key Stage 2. Thank you for these opportunities and we pray that both of those services will be occasions to reflect and give thanks for your great love and provision, your creation and our generosity as we seek to share your great love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we thank you for the Christian community across our town here in Taunton. Thank you, Lord, for all denominations, all who seek to worship and serve you in different ways. Thank you for the different forms of chaplaincy that exist, including the emerging new chaplaincy ministering to the courts, judicial system. And we bring before you those who minister in our hospitals and hospices in our shops and railways, in our schools and as street pastors. Lord, we pray that you would equip them as they serve others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we pray for those who are in need at this time those whose health is failing them in any way, those who are facing particular challenges or stresses, those who find themselves in despair without hope, those indeed who are in grief. We continue to hold in our prayers friends and families of Jack, uh, of Charlie North, of Pat Bartlett, of Yvonne Kershaw, and of Bill Blackmore. We pray that you would grant them strength and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So we offer you, Lord, our collect for today. Almighty God, you have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless till they find their rest in you. Pour your love into our hearts and draw us to yourself. And so bring us at last to your heavenly city, where we shall see you face to face through Jesus Christ, your son, our saviour. Who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As our saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. 
your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Give us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. So may the Lord bless us, preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. And let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. As you may have picked up next week in our morning prayer sessions, we focus upon um, generosity week and um, God's steward, our stewardship of God's creation. We have um, services this Sunday at St John's in Staple Grove at eight o'clock and at 1030 with our all age um, harvest service. And um, as always, you'd be very welcome and um, we'd be delighted to see you as well. Go well and look forward to seeing you. Bye.